Hey guys, I appreciate all the comments and all the feedback and all the subscribers out there. I've been getting some people who point out some inaccuracies about the car that is sitting behind me. So I thought I'd just go ahead and make a video where I show you guys everything that I know that's wrong with this thing. Just to just get it out in the open. So let's do it. This is going to be fun. So let's just start with the year model. Okay, so this car is a 1965 Cadillac. The car in the movie, yes, I know it was a 1959 Cadillac, but they only made about 400 or so of those cars and they're really hard to come by. So I think this was maybe pretty good for a 14 year old and his dad. Some obvious things about the year model. The headlights are vertical instead of horizontal. Now, yeah, I know I've kicked myself for years if this had been a 64 instead of a 65, it would have looked way more like the Ghostbuster car. But you know, these are the cards we're dealt. With the year model comes lots of things. Everything changed in 1965. The windshield's different, the car is boxier, the fins are almost gone. So those are obviously not the right strobe lights for the Ghostbuster car. Those were Grimes, like aircraft strobes, and those, I've seen them go for like $800 a piece. Yeah, I got these for $30 a piece. And they look good and they, strobe the license plate even if you want to get involved in this i bought this online 16 years ago and i thought it was amazing but i've always felt like it's too yellow i don't know what new york license plates looked like in 1984 but this is not what i pictured we had coker white walls on this car way back when i think these white walls look fine they're not accurate uh, the wheels are different we don't have hubcaps running on here but if you look at ghostbusters 2 the beginning of the movie, the Ecto-1, didn't have hubcaps either. So there you go. There should be a spotlight mounted right here. I bought it. It's not on the car yet because it's difficult to install. But yes, uh, it's also not gonna be screen accurate. So I'm telling you now. The decals on the car are not the right size. They're too small. This happened because in 11th grade, I was in a rush to get to school and my dad had this car in the garage. It was white and we were waiting to get the decals made. And he said, you gotta tell me what size this is gonna be. Like, what size decals do I order? And I was, I kinda got mad and I probably shouldn't have. I put my economics textbook up to the side of the car and that's how long the economics textbook was. I said, that looks great. Wrong, I should've looked that up. These blue hoses, not right. All right, these are just like gutter hoses that we found laying in a junkyard. So also, we've got them mounted in the car right here and right here, but it's always bothered me. In the movie car, there's another mount right here, but my dad didn't want to drill extra holes into the car even though I wanted to. So that may be something I do here and now. They're also black and I use some model paint to paint them blue which chips off all the time. Like when we were making the movie, I would have to respray it like every time we took it out because the, the stuff flakes off. You can see right here. These guys are fairly accurate. As far as I can tell, these are actually a metal piece on the real car, but these are plastic. This is also not an actual whip antenna that works. This whip antenna was uh, four separate tiny antennas welded together. So never knew that, did you? The license plate is, yes, a vanity plate, but it's Ecto-I and not Ecto-1, but that's the Roman numeral for one, so I'm gonna say it counts. We're missing a piece of chrome on this side of the car. I know it's not accurate, but it's also just something we're missing. There are no louver plates on this car, on the hood or on the back door. Where would you put louver plates on this hood? Let's talk about the roof rack. First off, this roof rack was made out of piping that was larger than the piping that was actually used on the real car. So this is a lot thicker and heavier. To my knowledge, there was not a support put on the original Ecto-1, but I noticed after we did this that there was one on the 1A. So kind of accurate, I'll take it. These lights are inaccurate. The wires run into these guys on the actual car. I bought these lights at Pep Boys for $100 a piece and I spray painted the lenses. The ladder, also made out of the same bar stock as the 
roof rack, also too thick. Should be a lot thinner than this. This tube is probably the wrong color and I believe it should have another sticker back here. We built this ourselves, so this is actually no real device. We took a piece of metal and made some knobs and found a face for it, so this is way inaccurate, but you know, it looks good. The siren is the wrong siren. We found this in a junk shop and sandblasted it and painted it, and it doesn't actually even work. The light bars look accurate, they're the right size, but these are actually Code 3 XL 5000s and have, as people have pointed out, a flasher in the middle of the rotators instead of a diamond mirror. This is actually not a propeller ray, as I've found out, much to my disappointment. This is some knockoff that looks a lot like a propeller ray, and it still costs a fortune, so I'm gonna take it. There's supposed to be an aircraft strobe beacon in the middle of these two lights. I have it. I've been working on it, I just have not mounted it to the car. It's also not the actual model that's on the real Ecto, but it looks pretty good. These oxygen tanks are actually firefighter oxygen tanks. They're not the right size and they're not the World War II aircraft oxygen tanks that are supposed to be on the car. It's just what we had when we were building this. I think they look pretty good, but yeah, noticeably they are a little bigger than they're supposed to be. I'm sure the size and proportions of this are wrong. We were using pictures off of gbfans.com and no actual plans. Just think back, this was 02, 03 when we started building this stuff. So I'm gonna take a pass on that. This fan box is probably too big and it's way more centered on the roof rack than it's supposed to be, but it won't fit behind this thing. I mean, we kind of messed that up a little bit. So it should be kind of moved over a little bit this way. The interior of the car, you know, I've said before, I love it, it looks like the real Ghostbusters because they have the green and white. Is what we said the first time we opened the doors on this thing. Uh, but the real interior is supposed to be black. There's also no, no switch boxes. We run all of our lights from this one switch right here. And I'm sure the real car didn't have a radio sitting on the seat like this to run the music and all the other stuff. I don't have any of the gizmos that the original car had in the back. We started to do that with this thing, but we honestly just, we didn't know what to do with it and there weren't that many pictures, so we didn't really develop the rear that much. The proton pack rack is a little different and only fits three proton packs because that's all we had when we made the movie. Little known fact, but the stretcher is also the wrong model. The front wheels don't pop out when you pull it out. It, the whole bottom section has to uh, drop down, so it makes it kind of difficult to uh, to extend. This video isn't for excuses. Yeah, I know, the year model bothers me. It's bothered me like since I was in high school. You think about it every time you look at it, every time you see those vertical headlights instead of the horizontal headlights. That's why we have a 64 Cadillac. And I'm sure if we found a 59 millimeter that wasn't like ungodly priced, then we probably have that car too. Just enjoy your day. <laughs> um, hope you enjoyed this. Bye.